Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we have an awesome guide for you featuring Super Archer Blimp Rocket Loons. Now, before we get too far into this, let's have a look at the difference between the Rocket Loon and its standard counterpart. So standard Loon, 276 DPS, 352 damage when destroyed, and five housing space with a movement speed of 10. So quite economical. Not the fastest troop in play, but it's still fast enough. Rocket Loon, however, same DPS as its standard balloon, but 600 damage when destroyed. That's a significant increase. It is a few housing space, more at 8 housing space, but movement speed of 12, so that's standard movement speed, is more than improved by that rocket effect you get right at the start of deploying it. That can get your balloon really deep into the base without any use of spells or additional tanking to protect it. Now, while you obviously want to take out everything in the base, your priority targets, at least early on in the attack, there's three of them. We covered off uh, all three of these in the last video that I did, so if you check that out, then you'll be familiar with this. But if not, number one, the town hall. You want to get that town hall down as a priority, and that has to be done with either the Super Archer Blimp or the Rocket Loons. You can't use your heroes for that. That's a no-no. Next up, we've got the Eagle Artillery. And because of the nature of this attack and how it works, essentially it's like a reverse to any other attack that you'll do, where your heroes aren't there to support the main push, your heroes are the main push. The rocket loons are there to support them. So taking that eagle down early will completely remove that constant barrage of shots that your heroes will be taking. And finally, anything else that's deep inside the core of the base. So anything that you will struggle to reach with your heroes or your rocket loons towards the end of the attack, ideally you want it gone at the hands of that super archer blimp really early on. So before we get into any more detail around how to execute the attack, I just want to talk very briefly about the pets that I like to have with my heroes. So with my king, Frosty, always a good combination. Queen and Unicorn, been a winning combo since Town Hall 14, of course it has. Warden and the Owl. And the reason for that, by the way, guys, is because I find that if your initial batch of balloons and your blimp do enough damage, your Warden and the Owl could still be standing long after that blimp has done its thing. And that is more value, more percentage added on to your final score and the less risk of a time fail. And the controversial one, Royal Champion. I actually prefer the Phoenix with the Royal Champion. A lot of people say Diggy, but I find that the Phoenix, when she comes up against multiple defenses that are targeting her at the same time, can add that a little bit more value than the Diggy can. Ultimately, it's your choice, but that's my preferred setup. Now, as we've talked about, that blimp needs to get some pretty significant value. We're talking Town Hall, Eagle, and a ton of stuff in the core. Anything that you get on top of that is a massive, massive bonus. When it comes to getting the blimp out and an attack like this, there's two elements to it that I think probably may throw people off and people may sometimes get wrong. So I'm going to talk specifically about them. One, it's going to be blimp placement and landing position. So you want to make sure that you're putting it in a place where it's not going to be any kind of significant risk, but at the same time, it's still going to get the value that you need and any additional bonus value. The other one is how you navigate around poison towers. So people ask me this all the time. What do you do if you've got a poison tower by the town hall? Well, you've got two options depending on that poison tower's position. If it's away from the town hall, you can get away with just overshooting it completely. That means basically just letting it fire off and then just carry that blimp flying on through. You can freeze the poison tower as long as you're not landing within its poison radius when it blows up. Or if you can sort of visualize what the range of a poison tower is, by the way, guys, it's very much the same as that of a cannon, if that helps at all. You can land the blimp within one or two towers of that poison tower's radius without the poison tower popping off. So, yeah, I mean, it depends on the situation and the circumstance, but they're very easy to get around as long as you think about it before going in for the actual attack. Another important thing people ask me about is how do you actually deploy a Super Archer Blimp? I, I know, it may sound odd as a question, but to be fair guys, if you've never done it before or you just don't know the best 
most economic way of doing it? It's actually a very valid question. So the blimp, you need to make sure again that you're landing it somewhere that it's going to be relatively safe. You don't want to land it right on top of the town hall. You don't want to land it right on top of a poison tower. You know, just be sensible about placement. But as far as deployment goes, you want to land that blimp, immediately drop an invis spell. Wait four seconds, drop another invis spell. Then do your double clone. Then you're going to drop your rage. Then another invis spell and then another one. And then another one if you've got one left over, I don't know. I do actually also carry a free spell in with this army comp, which is uh, a little bit different to previous Super Archer Blimp ones. And the reason I do it is because quite often to get maximum value, you're going to need to freeze a sweeper or maybe even a poison tower. So it's really handy to have it in there. The great thing about this strategy as well is that if you don't get everything you need from the blimp, you've got your rocket loons to clean up. So Eagle going down, which again is one of your priorities to rocket loons after the fact. And Town Hall, still up. Doesn't matter, guys. As long as it's reachable by the Rocket Loons, you send eight, nine, maybe ten of them straight into a Town Hall, that Town Hall will crumble. Now, after the Super Archer Blimp's done its thing, the next job is to deal with the Defending CC. Now, depending on what's in the CC, it will depend on how we deal with it. But in every case, we will always try and lure the CC over to the side. Now, if it's a Hound, if it's a Electro Titan with a Rocket Loon, we'll typically be using our Electro Titan plus our heroes to take care of it. When I say heroes, I'm talking usually the Queen. If it's Super Minions, this is the one that kind of throws me off a little bit sometimes, I've got to be honest. The way to deal with that one is, again, to lure it over, use your Electro Titan, but you're also probably going to need to invest a Baby Dragon or maybe uh, a Wizard or something in there to add additional DPS onto those Super Minions. Ice Golems, Again, quite simple. You can lure them over with an Electro Titan, throw a Baby Dragon in to help the takedown if you wish. DC gone. So guys, CCs are really easy to deal with. We don't have a Poison, but we do have an Electro Titan, and that is worth way more than a Poison spell to me. So the next part, it kind of goes in tandem with the Rocket Loon deployment, but I'm going to talk about it separately. And that is your hero deployment and your baby dragon. So the reason why your baby dragon comes into the mix is because it is your number one cleanup troop in this entire attack strategy. So what you want to be doing, you want to be trying to clear the path for the baby dragon to go one way from the entry point of the blimp and your heroes to go the other way. How do you choose which way which troop goes? Well, your heroes are going to go for the path of most resistance. So we're going to be using them to take out the heavier stuff because of course we've got the king an ice golem an electro titan baby dragon it's kind of squishy it doesn't really do much against defenses but it's great at picking off trash buildings so we're going to use our rocket loons to try and clear the path for the baby dragon while the heroes just basically brute force their way through the rest of the base so the baby dragon as you can see on the left of your screen gets a ton a ton of value. It can get so much for you, it could basically run for the entire duration of the attack if you manage it properly. Your heroes, ideally you need to be keeping them alive for the duration of the attack. We mentioned this a little bit earlier on. Now with your heroes, they're not a support unit. They're not there to help the rocket wings clutch up the three star. It's the other way around. So you need to, while you're also helping the baby dragon, also help the heroes out with rocket loons, with um, any kind of cleanup troops that you've got. Of course, with your Electro Titan and your Ice Golem. Essentially, the message I'm trying to put across to you guys is make sure that those heroes stay alive for the duration of the attack. Otherwise, chances are you'll either time fail or you'll come in with a big fat fail fail. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. So I would say on that train of thought, don't be sending the heroes in to sue the town hall down. If you find that you haven't taken the town hall down and it's accessible by rocket loons, again, something we touched on a little bit earlier on, send 10 or so rocket loons into that town hall. That will take care of it. The rocket loons normal DPS combined with their death damage and that rocket effect should be enough to get that town hall taken care of. If you've got a core cool town hall that hasn't gone down to your super archer blimp, by all means, funnel your heroes in there, try and clutch up that town hall for the second star. We don't want to be walking away with one stars in this attack, guys. It's just not the done thing, is it? We touched on the rocket loons being able to take out the eagle if it's on the outside, also for taking out a town hall that you may have missed. 
They're also really good for clearing out compartments that otherwise would be really, really difficult for your heroes to take out without support. So you can see here, they've uh, supported the RC in getting in towards the monolith without any distractions. Uh, also, they are fantastic for clearing the way for your baby dragon. We did talk about this not so long ago, but using those rocket loons to take out air targeting defenses as you've got a baby dragon working its way around the outside of the base, it can really prolong the life of that baby D and ultimately, like we talked about before, mean that the baby dragon could potentially live until the very end of the attack. And just to show that this attack isn't entirely situational, I've thrown it into a war attack that I've done in CWL today. So you can see we're going to get immense blimp value here. Admittedly kind of helped by the fact that he had a rage tower instead of a poison tower. I don't know if that's an oversight, we just didn't upgrade it. Whatever, I'm going to take advantage of it. But look at the blimp value we're getting here, guys. It's absolutely ridiculous. So one thing I've realized I didn't really touch on too much is the actual deployments of the rocket loons. I talked about the use of them, not so much deployment. So if you're looking to pick off one individual defense, two rocket loons will do it for most of them. You may need to use three rocket loons on things that are a little heavier, like wizard towers. But if you're looking to overwhelm a compartment, if you drop three rocket loons per defense, as you can see here, they sort of move in and take out everything behind the initial targets too. So looking at the value that we've got here, unreal. So it's relatively easy to finish off the rest of the base from here. We still have 10 rocket loons left over. We've got our heroes. We've got our Electro Titan that's dealt beautifully with the Clan Castle. And now we start to deploy our baby dragons. So the baby dragons can clean up around the outside. You'll notice we drop one at four one over at two and we're just going to let them work their way around they're ultimately going to take out a ton of value for us while we move in with the heroes into the real meaty part of the base where we've got all these huge huge defenses now i'm sending the king and queen in initially with the ice golem with what was left of the electro titan and then i send the rc in to kind of flank them and move in towards the core so take out those hard to reach defenses that the king and queen just couldn't get to Admittedly, in this attack, maybe having the Diggy on the RC could have been beneficial. I still stand by the fact, though, that I think the Phoenix is a little bit better. It's allowed my RC that once she does go down to get that extra lease of life and have that flying, fire-breathing bird appear in the middle of the base and continue to chip away. So, you know, it's a really strong attack. It's one that I 100% vouch for. I use it in Legends and War. Guys, if you haven't tried it, please do. And by the way, if you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to smash the like button. Also, drop a comment to let me know if you've enjoyed the guide, if there's, there's anything that I've missed in your opinion. I'd love to know. And of course, if you don't already, please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be made aware when I go live or when I post new videos in the future. I do one or the other pretty much every week, so there's always fresh content on the channel. Until next time, much love. Big Veil is out.